Hi, hi, my name is Rob, and not Zach today. Welcome to Legal Briefs, where you and I summarize South African case law or judicial precedents. Today we are looking at the Schifrin principle in light of the good faith principle and public policy. Brisley v. Drotsky 2002, 4, SA1, SCA. Facts. On September 15, 1999 Ms. Brisley, tenant, entered into a lease agreement with Ms. Drosky, landlord, a CNA standard contract, containing a non-variation clause, Clause 19, formed the basis of the lease. Contrary to Clause 19, Ms. Brisley and Ms. Drosky agreed that Ms. Brisley could pay rent on different days due to her circumstances at the time. January 31, 2000 Ms. Drosky terminated the lease agreement with Ms. Brisley due to reoccurring defaults by Ms. Brisley, despite the oral agreement concluded subsequent to the written contract. Issue Whether there could be departure from the Schifrin principle in favor of the bone fides principle read with Section 26 subsection 3 Constitutional Stipulation Ratio the appeal was dismissed with costs on an attorney-client scale. Reasoning, the most important section. Schifrin principle guards against the disputes and evidentiary difficulties that may arise in oral agreements concluded subsequent to the written contract. In this case, section 26 subsection 3 of the Constitution is irrelevant. Ms. Brisley no longer had a contractual right to live on the property nor did she rely on any statutory provisions to argue her right to live in the house. A court cannot simply seek refuge in the shadow of the Constitution to attack and overthrow established contractual principles. In this specific case, Section 26 subsection 3 of the Constitution was vaguely referred to without specificity. Good faith is an ethical value based on community standards of decency and fairness, and underlines and informs contractual law, however. A court has no discretion to refuse to enforce a valid contractual provision on grounds of good faith, such discretion would be contrary to the established contractual principle of pactus and servanda. The elementary and fundamental general principle is that contracts entered into freely and in all seriousness by competent contracting parties are enforced in the interest of the public or public interest. Other than creating legal uncertainty to the existing contracts, Departure from well-established contractual principles would spook future economic participation. However, although also dismissed the appeal, Olivia J.A., in minority, held in favor of public policy and bona fide principle in that a balance must be found between continuity of legal systems and socioeconomic reality. Ms. Drostky's reversal of the oral agreement by invoking the written contract was unjustified. There was no reason to take such unapproachable attitude towards Ms. Brisley. Contrary to decency and fairness. Conclusion Appeal is dismissed with costs on an attorney-client scale. Oral agreements did not constitute a valid amendment to the lease agreement. Section 26 subsection 3 is irrelevant. Also, the bona fide principle is not a free-floating ground to set aside or refuse to apply valid contractual provisions. And importantly, pacta sunt servanda prevails. Thank you for watching. Until next time.